you so much for coming. Lovely, lovely to see you all. Um, just so you know, as LWC embraces global and modern technology, as if, uh, are, we, are we good to go? Fantastic. It's very much like sort of Premiership Rugby, international football, we are now live streaming. Um, what will happen halfway through is that the camera will purely be focused here, so it's okay, no one needs to worry about clothing, hairstyles, etc. Um, but during a point, we play um, as a musical interlude, uh, which we're not allowed to live stream because we've been breached of copyright, so we will go quiet across the waves, three and three quarter minutes, and then burst back on once the conversation happens again. But we'll let you know about that. Um, Joel, are we okay sound wise? Fantastic. Um, do you know, I love the people. I, I just think they're brilliant because they are almost grown up, but not quite. And, and I had a, many years ago, I was head of geography, and I used to take my GCSE geographers to Leicester. We used to go and look at some different parts of Leicester. And there are some quite challenging parts of Leicester and some, some lovely parts. And it was really interesting. We've been to lovely parts which are very much like school and everyone's gambling around and relaxing on their research. And then we went to one area, which was a little bit tough, actually, than I did check down, actually. And before I knew it, I had sort of 15 pupils. I was walking down the high street, and I suddenly had 15 pupils very close to me. Going, so, are you okay? Everything all right? Yeah, yeah, good. And bless them, they just got a wee bit nervous, even these six-foot-two lads in a tough part of town, and just felt they wanted a bit of support. So, and I tell that because, really, that is our fifth form. Um, they look as if they're there and grown up, but they still need our care and support, and that's what we're very much this year is all about. Um, they're also top of the middle school, and that's a really important thing that people often forget. They are providing, to my mind, that leadership for our third form and our fourth form, as well as their own peers. There's a step up to this year. We've done over half of the GCSE group in terms of the work. We've got two terms to go, so it's really important. If, if you want to know the numbers, we've got about 140 teaching days until exam leave kicks in. If you divide that by 10 subjects, it's not that long. So anyone who's at home, and we're reinforcing it here, if people, if your sons and daughters are sitting at home thinking, I've got ages, well, you kind of haven't. And those who are most successful, and you're gonna hear from some pupils this evening who are now in our lower sixth, to give you a few tips and techniques to take home, are those who really have hit the ground running this term and are working, working, working but balancing that with activities too. Okay? I haven't seen anyone in 20 years of teaching give up everything apart from their work and <coughs> do better. It just doesn't happen. So please, if you hear anything from home saying, I'm going to give up this, I'm going to give up that, there is a balance to be struck. And hopefully you might hear a little bit of that this evening from our pupils. It's also, uh, your sons and daughters should now have had a chance to be training themselves. They know how they work best. Are they a morning person? What works well in the evening in terms of revision? When do they need to be going to bed? And they do need to be aiming to get to bed at a sensible hour. It's still eight and a half hours of sleep a night that's needed. We'll work really hard at that end here. Please, from your own to help support that. Um, I have here, as well, you know how passionate I am about the pupil voice. Um, there's something in the envelope. There are two things in your envelopes. No need to open them up now. Um, but one here is top tips for GCSE success as a pupil guide. Last year, I asked the uh, pupils who've just gone through GCSEs, what worked best for you? And these are the ideas that they came up with, that if you wanted to stick them at home on the kitchen fridge or up in the bedrooms, that works really well. On the other side, from our teaching staff, what does an A star and A grade look like? What should you be doing to achieve that? Beyond that, uh, defining your future, this is the booklet that goes into the sixth form. And this talk tonight really sits around not only this year, but also projecting forward to next year. And I'm hugely excited, not only by what I perceive to be a real potential of this year group to shine at GCSE, but then to go beyond there. Really excited by that. Confident, too, um, that we'll have a really fantastic group of new sick formers joining us. Last two years, we've had our highest ever retention levels into our sick form. We're continuing to develop that program with Mr. Badger and his team. Really excited about that but also the fact we've got some fantastic new lower sick people will join us in September. Um, one other thing on that first bit, careers, careers profiling, uh, all your sons and daughters will undertake, with Mrs. Allmark, a careers profiling. I'm sure many of you did it back in your day. Uh, I seem to remember doing it a little while ago. Three things I was likely to do. Number one, run a fast food restaurant. <laughs> Number two, work in the army. Number three, work in the navy. That was it. School
school mastering was nowhere near the top ten. Um, but sometimes it does feel like you're running past food restaurants. Um, so there's a little bit there. The final two years, what else can we aspire to? As of last year, any pupil who gets straight A stars and A's receives an honorary sixth form academic scholarship. Now, there is an emphasis there, our apologies, on the honorary. But what I've said, it was 14 pupils last year, it was a good slew this year. have got that to write on the CV forever more, especially when you're applying to universities. Achieve that, you become that sixth form scholar, and that opens up a range of other stretch and challenge opportunities. Academic commendations, normally between 10 and 20 pupils, outperform what we'd expect them to through something called midis um, by over a grade per subject. And it's a privilege to present them with certificates as well to say, gosh, you did well. That's really important. It doesn't have to be A stars and A's, it's at that level. And that's great also to be able to say that on your personal statements and references going forward. Into the sixth form, leadership opportunities just explode. We have 170 pupils, roughly speaking, in our sixth form. There are about 215 leadership opportunities at the last count. Mr Pearson and I sat down, did some maths on it. That's a huge number for your son or daughter to be involving themselves in, and rightly so. CCF, obviously, develop the DME, <laughs> school councils, more in the pupil voice, peer mentoring, crucial too. So there's a little bit there. Um, I would also, at this point, if there are any of you thinking, we really want to stay, but there might be a slight challenge in terms of finances, please contact me and let me know. We have opportunities for discussion around that, if there's a concern there. And beyond that, into the sixth form two, the tutor groups are so strong with our great set of tutors in fifth form and beyond, but the sixth form, the number's small, you specialise even further, and the tutors are crucial in working with you and your children to develop these delicious university references and personal statements. So there's a little bit around, around that, I suppose. Um, that's it for me at the minute. I'm now going to ask Lucy McNabb, our head of year for the fifth form, to talk through a few things before we then um, see a slideshow and hear from our pupils. Good evening. I think I've met most of you before um, as I worked with the uh, fifth form as they were fourth form last year. Um, I'm going to continue to serve the, um, the fifth form during, um, with extra support um, during the sort of academic side of their school life. Um, I'm supported by an excellent team of tutors um, who will ensure that all pupils are achieving um, the grades that they deserve. Uh, this year we have a new tracking system, uh, so we will be monitoring pupil progress really, really carefully. Um, so making sure that they're all achieving their plus ones and on track to do as best they possibly can. So the tracking system that we will be using um, is based on attitude to learning. So every three weeks, um, attitude to learning grades will be published on the VLE. Um, you will be able to ac access them through the VLE on a Friday evening. Um, each subject teacher will be entering an attitude to learning grade based on attitudes, approaches, habits and routines of the pupils. Um, and these will be awarded from a grade 7 being the best down to 1 being the lowest score. A 4 is good, so if a pupil is achieving a 4, they are doing all that the teacher asks. Five, 5 means they are going beyond expectations, pushing boundaries, showing initiative and taking some risks. 6 isn't easy to get. It's about the quality rather than the quantity of work choosing a difficult path rather than a slightly hard one and keeping this up over a sustained period of time so it's not just over a couple of lessons. A seven would be awarded as a culmination of consistent effort outside their comfort zone. The quality of work and work ethic should be consistently exceptional. However, if a pupil has forgotten prep or been late to a lesson, is unfocused or produces poor quality work, they may be awarded a three, and if there's persistent evidence of this, then it could be a two or a one. With the help of the tutors, we aim to track all this data in order to support the learning of the pupils. Those with high ATOL grades will be monitored to ensure they're being stretched and challenged as much as possible in the particular subject where they're achieving the high grade. Um, 
rewards will also be given every three weeks to the pupils. Um, and that's not just for the highest ATOL grades, but for those that are making really good progress as well. For those that fall below expectations, we have a system of academic report. Um, and this allows the tutors and myself to monitor the pupils really, really closely. Academic report lasts for two weeks, so it's in between each ATOL review. And the pupils will see me at the end of the week to go over their week. Parents receive an email from the, teach, uh, from the tutors um, to say whether their child is on academic report and um, tutors will comment on the report each day. Parents are also encouraged to comment each day or house parents if um, your child is border. There are four stages of academic report and the monitoring increases as we go through that. Mock exams are really, really soon. They're just after half term, so only a few weeks away. This is followed by a parents' evening on the 28th of November. And on the 29th of November, we have an Elevate talk um, called Ace Your Exams, which is going to be really, really useful for the pupils uh, to prepare them for the real thing next summer. Um, pupils should have a revision plan in place and should be spending some extra time on revision over the next few weeks and planning their half-term revision really, really carefully. Get the pupils focused now is key to success for next year. The pupils will meet their tutors on a regular basis in a one-to-one -one session um, and this is all going to be recorded in the tutor journal. So we slim down the tutor journal and we're monitoring the conversations that the tutors are having um, with, their, with their tutees. Um, they will also, the tutors will also monitor the balance between the co-curricular and academic, um, which is really, really important as the headmaster said earlier. Uh, tutor is always the first point of contact, um, but do not hesitate to contact me either by email or phoning the languages department. Uh, for any learning support questions, please contact Jane Turner. Her email address is senko at Lord Bonsworth. And we also have Sharon Allmark here tonight sitting in the front row. Um, you can call, contact her on Allmark S um, if you don't manage to speak to her this evening. Now I'd like to show you a presentation on um, life going into the sixth at LWC. Brilliant, thank you, Miss Pearson. Um, without further ado, can I introduce Harry and India and Billy? Um, what they're going to do is introduce themselves, um, a little about what they do, and then very happy to do a QA and a um, if anyone wants to ask them questions about life in the sixth form, advice and, and tips and comments from, from being in the GCSE years, and, and go from there, really. Um, I'll sort of put direct questions, if that's okay. Um, so, uh, Harry, where are you going? Hi, I'm Harry. Um, I join Old Wandsworth in third form, and the subjects I take for A level are maths, economics, and English literature. Hi, I'm India. I join LWC in first form, and I take art, business, and biology at A level. Uh, I'm Billy. I've been here since first form. I take economics, geography, and English at A level. Fantastic. Thank you. The floor is now open if anyone would like to ask the first question. If not, I am primed. <laughs> um, so I go with the first one, and then we can warm up from there. Um, I suppose the first thing is, um, what would be your tips and advice about making an absolute success for these last two terms before exam leave kicked in? Um, I think it's quite important to not leave it too late. Uh, just keep it sort of thinking over. You don't have to do loads of work um, all the time. Just Words of advice for you. Fantastic, thank you. Um, either of India, like to um, chip in or if, you, if you get to the end of the week and you've been studying a topic and you realise you don't really fully understand it, rather than going at the end of, or a week before your exams, going, oh, I have 10 topics, do one, when everybody's sort of struggling with it rather than at the end. Uh, for me, it was balance. I, I can't just do solid work, like, I have to do sport or something and distract yourself and then you're able to fix your mindset when you're work when you're working and you can focus more. That was that was my yeah. Thank you. Ah yes. Have you found it that you have to do a very big jump from GCSEs to your A Um I think 
think it's more independent now. Uh, there's more work that you have to you have to apply yourself. Uh, at GCSE, it was all quite sort of structured for you. But um, so far, there's not. You just have to be a bit more organised with your time. Did you manage to catch that at the back? Yeah. How did you use a tutor? And what did you get from that? How did you want to kick off with that one? Sure. Um, I use my tutor as definitely a support. Like they're very good at support. They know you very well. They know kind of your life and everything, so you can kind of talk to them about sort of thing. Um, if you ever have any issues, they're quite easy to talk to normally. So you can go through them if you have issues with work or you're struggling with anything. Yes. <laughs> I actually um, left and came back, so I rejoined. So I left at the end of fifth form and went to Peter Simmons in Winchester. And I just found that it was far too independent for a far too important year, and that uh, you you sort of put in a group of rather than here it's five hundred people at Peter Simmons, it was a couple of thousand. And I just felt like um, here you have so much more opportunities. You can sign up to do peer mentoring. You can go to Ghana. You can you can run activities, and then these are things that you can say you've done. Whereas at other colleges, you might not necessarily get that. So yeah, for me, I looked at Godalming College, and um, yeah, no, I. Uh, what I realised is that at this school I've really developed as a person and I, I don't think I've quite finished developing my character so I kind of thought that an extra two years should do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much for your honesty. That's much, much appreciated. Thank you. Um, any, other, any other questions? Thank you. Um, just to ask about the uh, mocks which happened straight after half term. How much would you recommend Vision-wise, for those two people today, uh, for the mocks, it's very hard to revise for the mocks because you're learning at the same time and you haven't finished your courses. And I think a lot of people found they did very little revision for their mocks. But personally, I found that <coughs> quite. I didn't have any pressures from home to revise, which meant I was less stressed building up to my mocks, and it gave me a very accurate representation of where I was. So I knew that if I, if I got a full break in history, I needed to go back over and look at my stuff rather than if I'd done loads of revision that if I might have got an A and I might have then come to the exams and gone, oh, well, I got an A in the box, whereas that if I could have just looked at the book the day before. Yeah, and one thing I'd quickly say is that mocks, there's no point at half term, you've got that window, there's no point doing six hours a day or something ridiculous like that because that it's just not sustainable. If you do that amount of work, you will you will get sick of it. I, I you know Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, so yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. At uh, what point in the year did you settle on your A level choices? Any other questions for that? That's, yes, thank you. Great question. Yes, um, what happens uh, in a couple of weeks' time, we run a, um, sort of an event for all the fifth-form pupils to sit and listen to our pupils here, to hear about next year, the opportunities and the discussions. So short answer, yes. Uh, and as well, receive that sort of concept of... Um, 
you know, tips and techniques. And I mean, gosh, it's beyond that. It's embedded into the, the teaching in each of the subjects and through tutors. How, how can you work best? So, so yes. Um, but we try and be as open and honest about yeah, the opportunities that come up. Um, anything else? Lovely. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>